So tomorrow and the next day for life, the volunteer training, and Saturday is the team building day. The whole house is working together at an after school program for kids. Monday through Thursday from 1.30 until 6. We're volunteers basically playing with the kids. Just like a stimulating five hours of everything. We're gonna have to leave here early. Hi, Montana. Hi, Montana. I'm Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi, I'm Anna. Hi. Find a spot, find a name tag, and just write your first name on it. Well, let's go ahead and start. What we'll be talking about is what you're going to be doing in a school age program. Um, can you walk in late? No. No. Can you decide, oh, you know, we went out last night, had a really good time, I'm really tired, I'm going to stay in bed? No. It's a job. They look for you, they need you. You're part of the program. And uh, what do you do as a volunteer? So that's why I'm here to do that. And I'm hoping that in the next two days, we'll connect not only on all of the great things that you're gonna bring into the program, but how to bring those out to children. So what I want us to do right now is, I'm gonna give each of you some paper. You've got markers here, you've got colors here. And I want you to write down all of the things that you bring into a program. So each one of you will get one of these. Why don't you help me out, Montana? And start writing down all those neat things about you. Brown skin girl. I'm a really bad girl. I feel like I'm in third grade. Go ahead and start hanging them up all on this wall here. Connecting with children, we have to go back and remember what we did as a child. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to focus on what you were doing after school. I want you to jot some stuff down. <laughs> Who were you with and what did you do? Well, I have like a big family, so like there's always people around when I was a little kid. So there's always people playing with me. And you always were always like... playing? I'd go home and watch TV or I'd just, I'd play with my Barbies. I remember shoes were a really big deal to me, what kind of shoes I had. Right. You know, and thinking I could run faster. <laughs> I'd put them on and oh, I'd have to <laughs> I was, I was home alone after school at that age. Like, I'd get cramps in my thumb from <laughs> Sorry, but... The memories that we have sometimes, you might connect with someone in the program. It's okay. That's the connection that you're going to have to make. This is what I want you to do now. And I want you to find a partner. And I want you to talk about some of the experiences. I think now's the time where a lot of things will start coming out. It was pretty, it was pretty wild. I tell you, no, I won't even go there right now. When Cyrus opened up about some of the crap that's happened to him in his life, a discussion arose about rape. And that's the point right there where Montana and Cyrus clashed. I mean, if, if a woman's raped, it's like that's going to affect her for the rest of her life. And it will do things to her that you can't even imagine. And it's like signing a paper saying, I'm signing to you years and years of pain, and part of you will never come back. But I have a problem believing a lot of women when they say they were raped anyway. Because I was put right back into that same situation. I, oh, I slept with this girl. She tried to say that I raped her, that I violated her. This woman took my clothes off. I didn't ask to come up to her room. Next thing I know, two weeks down the line, she's not speaking to me. I don't know nothing about it. But in circulation was, I'm a rapist. My boys all knew, tormenting me. I got sweat. I had to live the rest of my college career in fear. It was Whatever so bad it was, you wear. knew that something was wrong, and you chose to overlook that. Well, I'll guarantee you, she lied. I think it's dangerous. I think it's dangerous. You know, a woman who cries rape is just crying rape. She doesn't want to be believe it. Trust me, it's a painful thing to come out and say, oh, I was raped. You have to go through a lot. Why would anyone want to go through that? Say I raped you. Who do lie? I don't care what nobody says, because I didn't rape that girl. When it comes down to it, she lied, I didn't lie. I had to walk around school in front of all these people that looked at me like I raped this girl, and I didn't know they were looking at me like that. When it comes down to it, she lied, I didn't lie. You know what, I think that those are the minority. I don't want you to think that most of the women who say that they were raped or abused are lying about it. I just think it's such a hard thing. I've known girls that were mm -hmm. raped. Yeah. I was sexually abused as a child, and I know what you have to go through. Nobody's going to believe me. I'm not going to tell anybody about it. It's such a painful it. thing for the woman. 
that we don't even want to question her about it. So you can say, I raped you, and all of a sudden, I'm already convicted. I'm already guilty. Thank it's you. like every, the whole society looks that's at me not because... Look at the rape no, cases that have been around lately. People are okay. getting off. Okay, wait. Got to prove that you were raped. I think that after going through the experience I went through, I couldn't look at a woman the same way for a long time. I was, like, scared of women because I'm like, look, are you going to try and cry rape when you pursued me? There's two issues here. One is, I've been there, Montana, so this is what I've gone through. But in the same thing, uh, what you're saying is very valuable. But let me give you a heads up. Um, if you're in a school-age program and the topic like this starts, you need to be real careful when it comes to professionalism, what you're saying. Um, and you have to learn sometimes to say, you know what, I'm not going to go there. I was just like, I was just like, I need to leave because I was getting shaky and I could tell that something was about to happen. So I'm We're just like, in here had to get Cyrus. And I'm having a hard time believing him. And I had heard basically all I wanted to hear from Cyrus. I'm good for like the next few days. If I'm like, Montana, you know, mm -hmm. let's do this. Something is wrong with my package for me to push it on you like that, and that would cause you to back away. And if he's sitting there, yeah, let me get some, let me get some, something's wrong with him. I wish I could talk as openly as all of you. Jason and Elka and I are just kind of sitting there. <laughs> I know, I'm worried about Elka, because Elka's like the quiet one with all the rest of us. She's like, I, oh, never mind. <laughs> <sighs> right. <laughs> right, let's go. And they're like the men. I mean, I just can't trust, I don't trust them. Montana and I were clearly friends before, but the childhood experiences with our father kind of sealed it even more. I've never met my dad, mm -hmm. and I don't think I want to. Like, I don't see why there's any reason why. You know, all he did is, yeah, he donated half of, you know, my DNA, but that's all he did for me, you know? Yeah. Do you think it would give you some kind of sense of peace or closure to see your dad and say, look at me, I'm at Stanford, I'm gonna make a lot of money. And you didn't have anything to do with it. I don't know, it just pisses me off because he got remarried and this woman had a child. Yeah, so you're married, taking care of another woman's child. That doesn't make sense to me, you know. And I mean, we have struggled. Oh my gosh. Like, an unnecessary struggle. You know, so yeah, clearly I have issues. <laughs> I have issues with men. <laughs> I think it's hard to grow up being a girl nowadays without is. having issues with men. <laughs> yeah, men are basically man. weak, stupid, base, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're and everywhere. <laughs> One person in the house I have not connected with, I really got from him the idea that he thought women often lied about being raped after it happened. That will always be in the back of my head. Now this isn't just a sexual crime, this is a violent crime. My dad was telling me that some guy, a rapist in Texas, just got the gas chamber today. I've, I've been listening to you guys for over 10 minutes now. And you're, you're talking politically correct, but in the back of your mind, your father and you, and you, have already convicted Cyrus. Right, I don't most think people consider them over most. Uh, don't interrupt me, please. Cyrus was accused of a crime by a woman who later took that back. Mm -hmm. And I'm not defending Cyrus. What I am defending is the fact that he told us, he confessed to us, you are afraid of him on one level or another. Remember the whole rape thing? We was talking about that joint. Yeah. Like, he was going off. And then, so she was molested as a kid, and she gonna try and tell me that I shouldn't felt the way I felt. I'm like, look, the truth of the matter is, women do cry wolf, and men do rape women. But, uh, she cried wolf. So I have, I have a problem believing him when he says that that's what happened that night. You know, he says that women shouldn't just be able to say that they're raped and have nobody question them just as the same that i'm not going to listen to cyrus's story and go oh poor guy oh gosh you got a bad rap on that deal because i don't i don't know that that's what happened <laughs> what? Oh, we're just all about to kill each other so what? 
Everyone was looking at me like I had done something wrong. It, it killed me because they didn't go through what I went through. And also, I kind of got the impression that you thought that women cried rape, you know, which I don't like that, that term, but that women, women said they were raped when they weren't frequently. And I don't think it's frequent. I think it's definitely the exception. But I felt like I had to get my point across. I thought you might have a problem with me because the way the delivery came out of me, but I don't see how you can fault the person when I went through it. I don't know her side of the story, but I'm not, you know, I don't I think don't you're lying know. about it. That's, that's just, it's shocking to me. I would not have wanted personally to offend you in any way. If I had known that before, I probably would have went out of my way to speak about the situation totally different. Obviously, you've had different experiences than I have, and that was just disappointing to me because I, you know, I really liked you when we, when we got into the house. Being riled up like I was, I needed to apologize because I was all emotional over it, and, and it, it brings tears and I to my know, eyes. And I was too. It's going to be in the back of both of our minds. That's something you experience in a bad way, and I experience in a bad way. I don't, you know, I don't hate you, but, you know, like you said, it's going to be in the back of our minds, and, and what can you do? It's done, it's done, it's there.